Welcome to this Tutor to You topic video that looks at the urban redevelopment that took place as Rio hosted the 2014 FIFA World Cup and the 2016 Olympic Games. This is part of Paper 2, Unit A, Urban Issues and Challenges. Rio de Janeiro was chosen as the host of the 2014 FIFA World Cup and the 2016 Summer Olympics. However, Rio needed to improve infrastructure to handle global tourism and transport demand. It needed to modernise parts of the city, especially in areas near the stadiums and event venues. It needed to tackle inequality by upgrading favelas near key locations. And it needed to boost Brazil's international image and economic development. So we're going to start off by looking at the FIFA World Cup. So as one of the host cities for the FIFA World Cup, Rio undertook major urban development and infrastructure upgrades to prepare for the event. These aim to improve the city's image, boost tourism and ensure smooth logistics for millions of visitors. Firstly, there was the stadium renovation. The iconic Maracana Stadium, which is pictured on screen, was completely renovated to meet FIFA standards. Capacity was slightly reduced to 78,000 for improved safety and comfort and new seating, roofing and facilities were installed. The stadium ended up hosting several key matches, including the World Cup final. Secondly, there were transport improvements. To handle increased demand and reduce congestion, Rio upgraded its transport network. The bus rapid transit systems were expanded and there were upgrades to the metro systems with new and improved metro lines, including extensions to connect tourist zones and stadiums. Roads were also upgraded to reduce travel times between key areas and there was investment into airport modernisation. Thirdly, there were urban and environmental improvements. Public spaces and streetscapes were cleaned up or redeveloped to improve the city appearance. Security and surveillance were increased, particularly around the stadium, fan zones and tourist hotspots. And there were also some attempts made to improve waste management and clean polluted areas like Guanabara Bay. Fourthly, there was favela clearance. Several informal settlements near event venues or tourist routes were demolished or cleared, often with little compensation or warning. And thousands of families were displaced as part of city beautification efforts. Protests broke out in the lead up to the tournament, with criticism over prioritising stadiums over services like healthcare and education. And finally, there was investment into tourism and hospitality. New hotels, restaurants and tourist infrastructure were developed with temporary fan zones and cultural events set up through the city. There was also promotion of Rio as a global tourist destination with efforts to improve signage, public information and police presence in key areas. In summary, regeneration for the FIFA World Cup improved the global image of Rio and Brazil, upgraded infrastructure and public transport, boosted tourism and the local economy, and met FIFA's hosting standards. However, there was overspending on stadiums, meaning that less money was available for public services, and some of the infrastructure built is now underused and poorly maintained. Additionally, many argue that the regeneration projects benefited the elite over ordinary citizens, particularly as some involved displacement of vulnerable favela communities. Two years later, Rio hosted the Summer Olympics in August 2016, becoming the first South American city to do so. To prepare, the city launched a massive programme of urban regeneration, infrastructure development and venue construction aimed at both delivering the Games and leaving a lasting legacy, although some of this clearly overlapped with the improvements made for the World Cup. Firstly, Olympic infrastructure and venues had to be built, including the Barra Olympic Park, which was the main site for competitions and athlete housing. Over 30 sports venues were built or upgraded, including the Olympic Stadium, the Aquatic Centre and the Diodora Sports Complex, which hosted things like the BMX and rugby, as well as the Olympic Village to house 11,000 athletes, which was later converted into luxury apartments. In addition, media centres were also constructed. Secondly, there were transport improvements to connect the Olympic venues and reduce congestion. This included completing Metro Line 4, which linked outlying suburbs to the Olympic site, developing new bus rapid transit corridors and improving road networks, bike lanes and pedestrian routes. These all aim to provide faster and more reliable travel between airports, venues and tourist areas. 
Thirdly, there were more favela clearance and upgrades. To make way for the Olympic infrastructure, particularly near Barra and Diodoro, over 20,000 people were forcibly removed from favelas. For example, the Vila Autodromo, a favela next to the Olympic Park, was mostly demolished despite resident protests. In other areas, limited upgrading of water, sanitation and security took place, but not consistently. And critics argue that the regeneration focused more on investors and image rather than long term community needs and the promised social housing replacements were delayed or under delivered. Fourthly, there were environmental goals. Rio pledged to clean up 80% of sewage in Guanabara Bay, but this goal was not met. Additionally, the efforts to restore lagoons and waterways had limited impact due to poor enforcement. Rio aimed to be a green games, but many of its sustainability targets were missed. Lastly, there were urban regeneration projects such as the Porto Maravilla, which translates as Marvellous Port Project. This project involved the regeneration of the rundown docklands near the city centre and aimed to turn the area into a modern business, tourist and residential district. The project included new boulevards, public spaces and cycle lanes and a large museum, which is the Museum of Tomorrow, and a new tram or light railway system. Additionally, historical buildings were renovated and some favelas were also cleared here. The project cost over 2 billion US dollars and intended to improve city image, attract investment and boost tourism in the long term. So in summary, regeneration for the Olympic Games led to huge job creation, delivered all major sports venues on time, improved public transport further, which benefited daily commuters, and revitalised some areas such as Porto Maravilla and boosted tourism and the global visibility of the city. However, as with the World Cup, many of the Olympic facilities are now abandoned or underused. It did lead to massive overspending, so it cost more than 13 billion US dollars during a time of economic crisis. It resulted in widened inequality and forced evictions. And in addition, those environmental promises were mostly unfulfilled. So that concludes this tutor to you topic video focusing on urban redevelopment in Rio in order to host global sporting events. Thank you for watching.